Last week's Torah portion ended on an incredible high note. As Avraham and Yitzchak, Abraham and Isaac, passed the ultimate spiritual test. When Avraham demonstrated to God that he was willing to sacrifice his son, and Yitzchak demonstrated that he was willing to be sacrificed. But this week's Torah portion begins on a low note, with the death of Sarah, Sarah, Avraham's beloved wife, Yitzchak's mother. The commentators tell us that those two scenes, the binding of Yitzchak and the death of Sarah, are juxtaposed against each other for a reason, because they're related. Because immediately after the binding of Isaac, Satan, the Satan, traveled to Sarah and told her that her husband had just slaughtered her son. And from the shock, she passed away. Now that sounds pretty vindictive of Satan, the Satan. We know that he tried everything that he could to try to convince Abraham not to go forward to sacrifice his son, to disregard God's command. After failing, it seems that he went straight to Sarah and tried to take revenge. But that makes no sense. Because Satan is not a fallen angel. He's not an enemy of God. He's a trusted servant of God. His job is to test and tempt us. He doesn't want us to listen to him. He wants us to listen to God. So the Akedah, the binding of Yitzchak, should have been not only Avraham and Yitzchak's greatest moment, but also the Satan's greatest moment. So why is he running to take Sarah's life away by shocking her? Well, one thing we can presume is that it was Sarah's time to die. Because when the Satan acts in the role of the Malach Hamavas, the angel of death, he's also carrying out God's will. So the only question was how Sarah was going to expire. But still, why do it in this fashion? Here's why. Because as soon as the Satan finishes tempting us, and we don't listen. He tells us, you don't want to write that check to charity, and we write it. He says, you want to give in to this temptation, and we don't. The next thing he does is, immediately, he hatches plan B, and he tries to convince us to regret the mitzvah that we've done. Why? Think about it. If we sin, and then we regret that sin, we recognize we've done wrong, we resolve not to do it again, we repent, we wipe that sin off of our spiritual scorecard. Well, it works exactly the same way with a mitzvah. If you do a mitzvah and then regret it, you lose it. So this is Sutton's plan B to try to get us to regret a mitzvah after doing it. So that's what he's doing. Presumably, he made sure that Avraham knew that Sarah had died after she received the news about the binding of Yitzchak to see if he would regret the incredible mitzvah that he had done in obeying God's command to bring his son up as a sacrifice. Of course, Avraham rises to the occasion. The Torah tells us that when he returns, he eulogizes Sarah and he cries for her in that order. First, he steals himself, delivers the eulogy that I'm sure included not only incredibly beautiful words about his wife and her good deeds and his relationship with her, but also a recognition that her death was the will and the decree of God and had to be accepted as such. And then he cried. And even when he cries, the Torah gives us a little clue as to what was going on. Because if you look at the word for crying in chapter 23, passage 2 of Genesis, you'll see that one of the letters is smaller than the others, hinting to us that Avram was very careful to control himself, to reduce his display of public grief at the death of his wife, lest anyone think that he had regretted his role in the binding of his son, Yitzchak. And what a message to us. You've done the mitzvah already. You've written that check. You've resisted temptation. You've done that good deed. Don't regret it. Don't lose it.